actually suffered from burnout before. There have, however, been two really distinct points in my life and in my career where I really started to travel down that path. And it's actually only through learning about burnout more recently and through sort of understanding what it is and with hindsight that I was able to notice this. I've actually sadly been exposed to burnout a lot through my clients as well. And I started to notice this really particular cause that kept coming up, this common theme. Now, as you've heard this evening, there are so many different causes of burnout, but this particular cause is one that I've been exposed to most as a careers coach. So I really want to share it with you. And actually, George really did start to talk about it as well. So to help you do that, I want to, oh actually just before I say that, as you can see the name of my uh, talk is Upstream Interventions. So I am really interested in human health and disease, I studied at the university, and I've really been drawn to Upstream Interventions. So as well as sharing with you about this cause, this one particular cause of burnout, I also really want to share with you some tips to help you try and avoid it like I did. <laughs> So to help you do that, I want to take you back in time to this tiny little island called Jersey, which is where I'm originally from. So Jersey is an offshore jurisdiction, so I don't know if many of you know what that means, but essentially if you're a company and you decide to set up your head office on the island, you will enjoy a lot of tax benefits. That's part of it. So as you can imagine, a bunch of companies have done this and they need a lot of financial services support. So Jersey has this thriving financial services community. So I never worked in the financial services sector myself, but I was a recruitment consultant on the island, and I was helping people to navigate their careers in finance. So day in, day out, I was interviewing these individuals, and the issue with Jersey is, as you can see, it is tiny. And financial services being the biggest employer meant that a lot of people were feeling really, really trapped in their career. So there I was, I was interviewing these people, and they were reporting to me that they were just like really unhappy, they were exhausted, and actually some of them were just quite sad. And so I started to realise that there were these common issues that kept coming up. And here are some of them. So feelings of being trapped, trapped in your career. That powerlessness, having no control over their career. They didn't believe in the company. They didn't have a purpose. They were being disengaged. They were feeling unfulfilled. And their personal values were at distinct loss with the company that they were working for. So connecting the dots backwards, I was able to really realize that these are some of the things that are causing these individuals burnout. And what these things were doing for those people was it's causing a huge amount of inner turmoil. So they were having this friction and it was on their mind all the time and it was making them exhausted and it was manifesting itself in this cause of burnout. So connecting the dots backwards, I was able to notice that I was experiencing some of those things as well at those times in my life. And I was able to notice through the research as well that there's this one particular umbrella term for all of these issues. George, you might relate to this. Leading an inauthentic career. So in slightly less coachy chat, this is a career in which you can't truly express yourself. You just can't be who you are. So I want you to sort of conjure up into your mind the, the image of a plant that hasn't been watered for a really long time. And that's what these individuals were feeling. So I noticed two layers to this in, in, inauthenticity. And the first layer was people who were in the wrong career. So whether that was the wrong job, or the wrong industry, or both. So these individuals were reporting to me some of the similar things like this that weren't being met. Okay, so their natural strengths, they just were not being met in their career. Their personal interests, their passions, their beliefs, and their values. None of these things were being met in their career, and it was causing them to be really, really exhausted and sad and burnt out. Now, the other individuals, they were really good at their job, and they did actually believe in the overall mission of the organization, but it was the company itself 
that was causing issues, so it was the culture of the organisation. And these individuals reported that it was a toxic culture, they had a lack of psychological safety, they were hiding their true personality, and they were feeling like they had to conform in order to feel like in, to fit into the company. So I really want you all to just take a look at that and think about your own career. Maybe you are jumping on the tube in the morning and you're putting on that mask and you're getting to work and you're pretending to be somebody that you're not. And over time, this can get really, really exhausting. So now you know a little bit more about this particular cause of burnout, the one that I've been really exposed to, mostly through my clients. So now I want to share with you some upstream interventions. And to do that, I'm going to tell you about those two times in my own career when I really started to travel down those paths. So the first time happened when I was the recruitment consultant in Jersey. And I loved the company I worked for, amazing team, and that was really what was keeping me there, to be honest. But after five years working in financial services recruitment, I realized it was just not me. And actually, I felt totally lost. So a good thing to do when you're feeling lost is to find yourself. I know it's a coaching cliche, but I really did need to do that. So you can do this in a number of different ways, but I saved up, I spent a little bit of time traveling. I also took a meditation course, I started practicing yoga, and I really threw myself into all the health and well-being events that were on the island, which wasn't many, but I tried to get to as many as I could. Just as a side note, if you were at a crossroads, you could do what my husband did and take yourself off to Iceland for 10 days on your own and go camping. So <laughs> that actually worked when he came back, quit his corporate career. So if you want to chat with him about that later, I'll introduce you. But basically, the purpose of all this, the purpose of finding yourself, is to gather some positive feedback, some positive information about who you are. And then what I did is I used that information and it fueled my transition my career transition into the wellness industry, and I became a careers coach for a digital wellness startup. So that's great, that was brilliant, I felt amazing, and then two years went by, and again, I was working for this incredible company, team that I am still friends with today, but I took a moment because something wasn't right, and I was like, what is going on? And I realized that the part of my job I loved, the coaching, was only taking up 30% my time. So I was a careers coach and there I was coaching people how to make your most authentic career and I really wasn't doing it for myself and that was affecting my emotional health and it was on my mind all the time and I just really couldn't concentrate on much else let alone be, be good at my job. So along came turning point number two. Now at that point I had invested in a coaching qualification and that was another example of how I got a huge amount of positive feedback. So I did this qualification, it was amazing, I was meeting all these people, and it felt right. It just sort of felt like I was coming home. And so I used that positive feedback and it made me sort of drive the decision to speak to my boss. And I tried to figure out a way where I could do more of what I loved and stay with the company. And that is a good tip if you're thinking of quitting anyway. I do really recommend trying to have a chat with your boss, but it doesn't always work out, and it didn't for me. And so I was faced with this decision. Do I stay with this amazing company, incredible career prospects, um, but stay in a job that I was only really loving 30% of, or do I step into this like, really scary, uncharted world of being self-employed, but being able to create the most, sort of, exactly the type of role that I wanted? So obviously, I chose, I chose to take that risk, but I, re I really didn't feel like I was taking that much of a risk. It was more of a risk to me to stay. It was more of a risk to my well-being to stay. And I felt like I was choosing authenticity, I was choosing fulfillment and joy. So what can you guys learn about this? So all of the things that I did, underpinning it all, were two driving forces, and they were proactivity and self-awareness. So combined together, this is what I call conscious career cultivation. So here are some top tips for you guys to consciously curate your own career. And the purpose of this, just to connect it back in with, with burnout, is obviously 
these are upstream interventions, and if you start taking them, then hopefully you'll be able to avoid suffering from burnout. Okay, so tip number one is get to know yourself. It's really hard to be yourself when you just don't know who you are. So there are some of the things I mentioned already um, about you know, going traveling, but here are some other tips. Your personal values are basically the most important beliefs that you hold, and they're amazing driving factors in your life. If you know what they are, they can help you make decisions with your own sort of self and mind. But if you don't know what they are, then how can you do that? Tapping into intuition. So to help you do that, there's a few questions. What do you love to do? What are you good at? When have you been at your best? And then frustration. So frustration is, I know, sort of a negative emotion, but you can actually really use frustration. So where are you frustrated in your life? I was frustrated when I was a, um, a recruitment consultant because I felt like I, I wanted to help those people more and I couldn't. So frustration could be a really good signpost for you in your career and helping you to navigate it. Be more you. So it may well be that in your current career you have that toxic culture and you're having to pretend to be someone you're not. So this sounds really simple, but just things like taking up some hobbies or following your interests in your own time, this can help you really get some positive feedback. And if you're unable to sort of welcome more of yourself into your career straight away, doing some hobbies, and this can be something small, it doesn't have to be a massive investment, but doing some hobbies, following your interests, is an immediate way for you to actually feel more authentic and feel more you in your life. The third tip is be courageous. So you may actually just need to make some changes. And I do really believe that deep down, most people who need to make drastic shifts in their life, they do know that it's actually fear that is holding them back. They're just too scared. So facing your fears does take courage. And the amazing thing about the modern world is it's actually really okay to change your career. It's common, it's not easy. I'm not gonna pretend it's easy, but it is definitely worth it. So again, I just wanna throw it out to the audience. I really want you to have a think about this next question. Do you feel authentic in your own career right now? And the answer to that question is really important because we spend two thirds of our life working. I mean, I know that figure, it's sort of, I see different figures everywhere, but it's a bunch of time of our, of our life that we spend at work. So if you aren't feeling authentic, what changes do you need to make? So finally, I would just like to leave you with this quote, which I really think sums it up. You have to leave the city of your comfort and go into the wilderness of your intuition. What you'll discover will be wonderful. What you'll discover is yourself.